On September 17th and 18th, 2024, a series of devastating explosions shook Lebanon to its core, leaving the nation in a state of shock and mourning. The blast specifically targeted members of Hezbollah, a powerful political party and militant group that holds significant influence in the region. Hezbollah has long been a contentious entity, both within Lebanon and internationally. The explosions were triggered by rigged pages and walkie-talkies, devices that are commonly used by Hezbollah for their internal communications. These everyday items were turned into lethal weapons, showcasing a new level of sophistication and malice in the attacks. The attacks resulted in numerous casualties, with dozens killed and hundreds injured. Emergency responders worked tirelessly to assist the wounded and manage the chaos that ensued. The scenes of devastation were heart-wrenching, with families torn apart and communities left in ruins. The blasts primarily occurred in Beirut's southern suburbs, an area known to be a Hezbollah stronghold. This region has seen its share of conflict, but the scale and precision of these attacks were unprecedented. The sudden and widespread nature of the explosion sent waves of panic through the region. Residents were left in a state of fear and uncertainty, worried about the possibility of further attacks. The psychological impact on the community was profound as people struggled to come to terms with the violence that had erupted in their midst. Lebanese authorities immediately launched a comprehensive investigation into the cause of the explosions. Teams of investigators and police were dispatched to the scenes to gather evidence and piece together the events leading up to the attacks. The investigation quickly focused on the possibility of sabotage given the simultaneous nature of the blasts and the specific targeting of Hezbollah members. Authorities questioned numerous individuals and examined the rigged devices to understand how such a coordinated attack could have been carried out. The attacks highlighted the vulnerability of communication devices and the potential for everyday objects to be turned into deadly weapons. This revelation has raised concerns about the security measures in place and the need for more stringent controls to prevent such incidents in the future. The incident sent shockwaves through Lebanon and the international community, prompting widespread condemnation and calls for a thorough investigation. Global leaders expressed their solidarity with Lebanon, condemning the attacks and urging for justice to be served. Public protests erupted with citizens demanding answers and accountability from their government. Hezbollah, known for its sophisticated communication network, had increasingly relied on pages and walkie-talkies for secure communication. The group believed these devices were less susceptible to interception and surveillance compared to modern cell phones. The pages offered a seemingly secure way to transmit messages and coordinate operations, especially in areas with limited cell phone coverage. Their simplicity and lack of internet connectivity made them attractive for avoiding electronic eavesdropping a constant concern for Hezbollah. However, the September attacks exposed a critical flaw in Hezbollah's security strategy. The attacks demonstrated that even seemingly outdated technology could be compromised, turning these communication devices into deadly weapons. The incident served as a stark reminder that no communication system is entirely secure. It forced Hezbollah to reassess its communication protocols and highlighted the constant need to adapt security measures in the face of evolving threats. Lebanese authorities quickly pointed fingers at Israel, alleging their involvement in the pager attacks. They accused Israel of infiltrating the supply chain of the pagers and planting sophisticated explosive devices within them. According to Lebanese officials, Israel exploited the pages' simple design, planting tiny explosives within the batteries. These explosives were virtually undetectable, making the pages appear harmless until detonated remotely. The allegations against Israel, if proven true, would represent a significant escalation in the ongoing conflict between the two countries. The use of such sophisticated tactics and the targeting of a communication network vital to Hezbollah's operations suggested a calculated and daring operation. The allegations sparked international debate and raised serious concerns about the use of such unconventional tactics in warfare. The incident highlighted the growing challenges of attributing responsibility for attacks in an age of increasingly sophisticated technology and covert operations. 
Section 4, International Legal Debate. The Pedro attacks in Lebanon ignited a fierce international legal debate. The incident, which resulted in significant casualties and widespread destruction, drew immediate international attention and condemnation. At the heart of the debate was the question of whether the attacks constituted an act of war or a violation of international law. This distinction is crucial as it determines the legal and diplomatic responses available to the international community. Legal experts and governments were divided on the issue. Some legal scholars pointed to historical precedents and international treaties, arguing that the attacks met the criteria for an act of war. Some argued that the attacks, if orchestrated by Israel, constituted an act of aggression against Lebanon, violating its sovereignty and territorial integrity. This perspective was supported by various international bodies and human rights organizations. Others contended that the attacks could be classified as targeted killings, a controversial tactic that has been the subject of much debate in international law. Targeted killings, often used in counter-terrorism operations, raise complex legal and ethical questions. They argued that the specific targeting of Hezbollah members, considered combatants by some, could fall under this category. This argument hinges on the classification of Hezbollah as a terrorist organization by some countries, while others view it as a legitimate political and military entity. The lack of clear evidence and the complexity of the legal issues involved made it difficult to reach a definitive conclusion. The debate was further complicated by differing interpretations of international law and the political interests of the countries involved. The incident highlighted the need for greater clarity in international law regarding the use of force and the attribution of responsibility for attacks in the digital age. As technology evolves, so too must the legal frameworks that govern international relations and conflict. This case serves as a stark reminder of the challenges faced by the international community in maintaining peace and security in an increasingly complex world. Section 5. Hezbollah and Israel Respond Hezbollah, reeling from the attacks, vowed to retaliate against Israel. The group's leader, Hassan Nasrallah, condemned the attacks as a cowardly act of terrorism and promised a swift and decisive response. Israel, as is their policy, refused to confirm or deny involvement in the attacks. However, Israeli officials issued statements warning Hezbollah against any retaliation, emphasizing their right to defend themselves against any aggression. The war of words between the two sides heightened tensions in the region, raising fears of a wider conflict. The international community urged both sides to exercise restraint and avoid any actions that could further escalate the situation. The incident underscored the volatile nature of the Israeli Hezbollah conflict and the constant potential for miscalculation or escalation. It highlighted the urgent need for diplomatic efforts to de-escalate tensions and find a peaceful resolution to the conflict. Section 6. The Future of Warfare As we look ahead, the landscape of conflict is rapidly evolving, driven by technological advancements and shifting geopolitical dynamics. The pager attacks in Lebanon offered a chilling glimpse into the future of warfare. These attacks were not just isolated incidents, but a harbinger of the new kinds of threats we may face. The incident demonstrated the potential for everyday objects to be turned into deadly weapons blurring the lines between civilian and military targets. This transformation of mundane items into instruments of destruction signifies a paradigm shift in how we perceive security. The use of seemingly outdated technology like pages highlighted the evolving nature of threats and the need for constant adaptation in security measures. It serves as a reminder that even obsolete technology can be repurposed with devastating effect. It underscored the importance of cybersecurity and the need to protect critical infrastructure from sabotage. As our reliance on digital systems grows, so does the vulnerability of these systems to attacks. The incident also raised profound questions about the ethics of warfare in the digital age. How do we balance the need for security with the potential for abuse of power? What are the moral implications of using technology in warfare? The increasing use of covert operations, cyber attacks and unconventional tactics poses significant challenges to international law and the rules of engagement. Traditional boundaries and definitions of warfare are being blurred, making it harder to apply existing legal frameworks. 
The pager attacks serve as a stark warning. The battleground of the future will be increasingly complex, unpredictable and potentially more devastating. Military strategists must now consider a wider array of scenarios, including cyber warfare, information warfare and hybrid warfare. The international community must adapt to these evolving threats and work together to establish clear rules and norms for warfare in the 21st century. Collaboration and communication between nations will be crucial in developing effective strategies to counter these new forms of conflict. Only through a united effort can we hope to navigate the challenges of future warfare and ensure global security.